in this week's episode of Working With Todoist. It's all about start dates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Working With Todoist. My name is Carl Pauline and in this week's episode I want to give you a few strategies on using start dates in Todoist. Now, for those of you wondering what do start dates mean, well start dates really comes from the application OmniFocus and quite a few people have moved from OmniFocus to Todoist and the biggest thing they generally miss is the ability to create start dates. Now, I actually found that a problem also when I first started with Todoist, but I realized that actually the solution is quite simple. And what I thought I would do in this week's episode is show you how I solved the problem of start dates <coughs> in Todoist when I first started. And the reality is, why would we need start dates anyway? because we use someday maybe folders and there's a few little tricks you can do with your someday maybe folder and if you're doing a proper weekly review which is highly recommended then actually start date should never ever be an issue but for those of you really struggling with it this week's episode should clear up that little problem for you so before we get into Evernote I'd just like to say if you like this episode please click on that like button below and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. Okay, let's get into Todoist and I'll show you how to set up start dates. Okay, so let's have a uh, pretend that we've got a project here called the 2018 Winter Skiing Holiday. And I've done a little bit of planning in this particular project and I am set to go. But the only problem is right now it's the end of August and I don't really need to do anything with this particular project now until let's say the end of October. So now what I could do is I could just put this project into my personal projects right here and just let that stay there because obviously with nothing dated I don't need to worry about anything. But the problem here is is if you're one of those people who have got a lot of projects inside their personal project folder, then it's very easy to get missed and you won't know when to start the project. So what you can do is just drag that one out and let's put it back in the project list. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create what I like to call my a start date. Now, <clears throat> let me just close my personals. So we've got this project here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a task and I'm going to attach the <coughs> uh, phrase comma SP that's going to give a text expander snippet now I'm going to repeat that because last time I used the text expander snippet I got a lot of people asking questions how did you do that well I use an application called text expander and I create my own snippets and so in here what I've done is I've got start project in brackets and I've got exclamation mark exclamation mark and I flag it as P2 now the reason I flag it as P2 is because P1 flags are very special and they are part of my uh, today's objectives but a P2 flag is a essentially an AM task so I want to see this AM task so what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to put 2008 winter skiing holiday and I'm going to set that date for the 30th of October and that's it <clears throat> now to be fair what I will do is because of when I'm doing my weekly review that's going to be at the top of my project list now the thing is I can now hide this project in my someday maybe folder like that 
boom, it's disappeared. Now, on a week-to-week -week basis, I don't check my Someday Maybe folder because it's Someday Maybe. And quite often, I have a lot of projects in there. But usually, at the end of every month, I do check Someday Maybe. So this week is the end of August. So Sunday, the 2nd of September, I will check my Someday Maybe folder. But it's not a strictly adhered rule. It's just something I've got into the habit of doing. So essentially what will happen now is on the second on the 30th of October this task start project 2008 winter ho winter skiing holiday will come up in my daily list and then I can make a decision as to whether to start the project or delay it another month. So that's how I have always operated with start dates since I moved from OmniFocus about 4 or 5 years ago. And I have to be honest, like I said in the introduction, the start dates was the biggest issue I had. It was the biggest, if you like, problem I had when I moved from OmniFocus to Todoist. But then I realized actually I was overcomplicating things and really all I needed to do was to just create a task which said start project, as I have here, and 2018 winter skiing holiday now one more thing that you can do here is if you do if you think this is too involved what you can do is as I've mentioned many times before actually is using your labels and using the next actions label here now the next actions label actually in the samples I've got in this demo account are actually uh, dated but what I could do is within that project my someday maybe project let's just go open up go back to my skiing holiday what I could do is I could just either uh, let's create let's remove let's just remove this what I could do is do at next actions and remove the flag because I don't need the flag and that's it. Now, the thing here is, oh, so I've got a date in there. Let's remove the date. We don't need the date. Now, you've got to trust yourself if you're going to use this system. Because this has got the next actions and because the project is the bottom of my projects list. And if you remember from last week when I showed you how to do it orders their tasks, this will come up in my label. If I go into my label now, uh, this will come up as at the bottom of my next actions list. So as long as your next actions list is not a huge list and you are using next actions correctly and I will probably cover how to use the next actions list next week maybe you could actually just do it that way but to be perfectly honest I wouldn't necessarily trust myself I did come from a, a, a an OmniFocus background so I actually prefer to use the system that I have here which is to um, SP and just tap there and so what I would I what I would actually prefer to do is sorry my Siri watch Siri was talking to me at that point I actually prefer to do it this way because a it looks better and b once I've got a date in there as I will put in here 1st of October uh, this actually is a much stronger start date for me so because I've got it in my someday maybe folder I'm not going to see the project until I need to see it and that is one of the ways that I overcame the start dates from OmniFocus when I moved over to Todoist. So hopefully that's given you a couple of ideas that you may want to use if you're struggling to find a way of using start dates within Todoist. Personally, I don't think we need applications with start dates. It's just something that OmniFocus does. It drags you into their system and then you feel lost when you move away from their system. But like I said, I actually had no problems moving away once I simplified it and asked myself, what's the point of a start date? Because you can just create a task in any project you like with a date to say, start this project. So you don't really need start dates anyway. But that's just my personal opinion. You may disagree with me and that's perfectly okay. Okay, thank you very much for watching this episode. It just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Thank you so much for watching this video. Now, if you liked this video and you want to take your productivity to the next level, then I have an online course just for you. Your Digital Life 2.0 online is designed to give you the fundamentals so that you can build your very own productivity system. 
This course gives you the best practices for setting up a system that works for you, your personality, your character and your working style. It gives you the details of what you need to do to set up a to-do list manager, your calendar and your notes application. And it goes into a lot of detail about setting it up and why you should be setting it up that way. And what this course does is it builds your productivity system on the foundation of your goals because ultimately that is the most important place where you need to start when you're building a productivity system. Now I'd love to see you in this course so please if you want to find out more about Your Digital Life 2.0 details are in the show notes below you can go there and you can find out everything you're going to learn in this course and don't forget when you do join this course you get a free copy of Your Digital Life 2.0 book. So this course is tremendous value and I would love to see you in the course. Thank you very much for watching this video.